please remember to leave a like, a comment, share the video about, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Thank you. Well, isn't this just fantastic? Captain's Log, Supplemental. I'm wondering when those that are famous will finally stop pretending that they are, well, law-abiding citizens. As I'm starting to run low on brown isocubes, and I'm not sure I can convince my crew to crap out anymore. Hello everyone, welcome to the Halls of Injustice. Today we welcome inmates number 15-something, I can't remember which, I think it might be 158, no it's 154, my apologies, I had to go on Discord there, to the isocubes. His name is Richard Rufus, but before we go into who he is, what he did, and how he ended up in one of these beautiful, beautiful cells, I have to provide you with an update concerning Julie Chrisley, but also Jerry Harris, two individuals we have covered here on the Halls of Injustice. The Chrisley family got screwed over for fraud. Julie Chrisley is gone to prison. She is going to the same facility as Jerry Harris. How adorable. FMC Lexington is where she's going. It is a minimum security satellite camp, so it's not to be confused with a supermax facility. But I will make it clear, neither Jerry Harris or Julie get to fraternize. That is, for obvious reasons. She was given a seven-year sentence and will spend her time there. And even though the facility is kind of, well, name-wise thought of as a medical facility, she's not there for medical treatment. So to begin this video, to discuss inmates number 154, we need to tell you a bit about who Richard Rufus is. Richard Rufus, aka inmate number 154, is a 48-year-old man from Lewisham, England. His former occupation was a professional football player. He was in fact a one-team player person, as in he only ever played for one team throughout his entire career. His career started in 1993 and ended in 2004. He did, on six occasions, play for the England under-21s, but he never actually made it to the main squad. He has been voted by Charlton as their single greatest ever defender, and in 2013 was inducted into the Charlton Athletic Hall of Fame. For Charlton, he made 288 appearances and, as a defender, scored 12 goals, which, I'll be honest, isn't actually that bad for a centre-back. He was held in such high regard that on three separate occasions, he received the Player of the Year award for the team, and by the fans he was voted as Charlton's greatest ever defender. At the age of 29 though, he was forced to retire. The reason why is because he had, from 2003, been undergoing a number of knee operations and people believed he had actually been making enough of a positive recovery that he could in fact come back full time. However, the operations were unsuccessful, which did lead to his retirement. Similar injuries plagued other members of the squad in fact, Gary Rowett being the other defender for Charlton who had to retire because of similar injuries. When he retired from football, he became a born-again Christian and involved himself with a number of charities, working alongside other Christian footballers, along with occasionally doing punditry work. Punditry work for retired football players is arguably the best job they get. Someone could say coach, manager. The problem with that is the best managers are usually some of the worst players. The best players are often the worst managers. As far as his trophy cabinet goes, he has two medals, one for the 1999-2000 season First Division Championship, along with winning the playoffs in 1997-98 season. What I'd like to do now is go through the crimes of Richard Rufus, and the reason why is because this goes all the way back to 2013, nine years after he retired, because he was involved in a number of, well, quite expensive problems. These in turn all built up to his inevitable fall. For the kind of crime that Richard Rufus committed, Richard Rufus had to give off an impression, put on a facade. The idea instilled in the minds of many that he was, in some way, not only trustworthy, but somebody that comes from a kind of stock that means, well, if we lose something, he'll surely back us. He's trustworthy because he's made it big. 
As a born-again Christian, you can trust him. So the reputation he had gathered over the many years as a professional football player, a respected church member, along with any goodwill from his family that they saw in him, had to be used and maximized to best gain. The crime we're going to be covering today is fraud, if you haven't worked it out already. To do this, Rufus would make it look like he was more successful than he was living in a rather large home, driving around in a rather expensive car, the home itself of course being a five bedroom property on a private estate in Purley, South London, the car being a Bentley, and of course, super status serial time, no not a storm watch, a Rolex. Now there is no doubt in my mind, during his career, he had in fact earned that house, that car and that watch. Keeping it so long after his career ended when the money would not have been as good meant he had to get very creative. So he started to invest money, using investment strategies to return a profit. And this is where your lobes might not tingle as much, because if he's in the ISO cubes, it's a clear indicator he failed. But he didn't fail because of bad investments. No, no, he failed for another reason. So in 2013, December 2013 that is, Rufus Young was initially declared bankrupt after a £6 million failed investment. This in turn cost his church £5 million. This is why I queried how he still had the house. Why I do wonder why no confiscation order was pushed at that time. So as a born-again Christian, Rufus had managed to dupe the Kingsway International Christian Center, friends and family members, into handing him money while boasting of making colossal sums as a foreign exchange trader. The promise he had made to them was a return of up to 60% a year. With these new investors' money to fund early takers, Rufus would then use a pyramid or Ponzi scheme which led to other people, newer investors, losing more money. So what he did was he took the money from the first investors, spent it, got new investors, gave back the investment to the first people to then rinse and repeat while putting money away for himself. Early on, he had managed to spend about £300,000 of other people's money on himself and maintaining a lifestyle he was not entitled to, because his ability to invest money had failed fundamentally. He was actually a really bad trader, rarely making any form of a profit. So instead, he took their money so he'd look like he was doing well. And to keep this going, he kept on duping more people into investing, so those earlier on wouldn't notice that he had completely conned them. It was estimated that he had squandered and squirreled away approximately £2 million into personal accounts, allegedly for the purposes of further investment. But not one penny of that money was ever transferred into his trading account. He then blew that money on his home, his car, his watch. To further aid him in his endeavors, he would produce documents with fictitious numbers. He would lie to potential investors by telling them he worked with top banks like Goldman Sachs and Deutsche Bank, and that leading footballers, including people like Rio Ferdinand, were also investors. So when he was arrested, he was charged with fraud, money laundering, and carrying out a regulated activity without authorization. Something which was acknowledged by those in the trial when it got there was the fact that Rufus refused to admit he had made a mistake, which is why he kept on hoodwinking people, conning people, into investing further money into it. It's why he went to newer people as investors, rather than go back to the start and simply say, yeah, this didn't work out. Around that time, it would have been like investing in property in Spain. The economic crash certainly put paid to that, and if anyone had invested money then, I'm sure some of you are still feeling the pinch to this day. In fact, there is a football player who has spoken about this called Steve Brown. He actually played defense with Rufus. He invested 200,000 into a property in Spain and lost all of it. So with all this out of the way, perhaps now we should get to the trial and the sentence of Richard Rufus. Back in November of 2015, Rufus was branded a fraudster by a specialist civil court judge following an £8 million loss to investors. Rufus had operated a £16 million Ponzi scheme involving over 100 investors, including members of his family and congregation members of churches he had attended. He pocketed more than three million to fund his life. The insolvency services described the case as one of the worst ever. He was given 
as punishment for that a 15-year bankruptcy restriction order. A bankruptcy restriction order, more commonly known as a bro, is a legal order from the court that extends for a period of time you have to follow certain restrictions. It is not a criminal offence. A bro <laughs> can last between 2 and 15 years. The length of this depends on how serious the court thinks your behaviour was. In August of 2019, Rufus was due to appear in court in respect to foreign currency exchange fraud of up to £9 million between 2007 and 2012. The trial commenced because of many delays Kufnus played a part in November of 2022. During the trial, the court heard victim testimonies from those who had been defrauded by Rufus, including the Kingsway International Christian Centre, where for decades he had been involved promising them, a church leader anyway, a lucrative return in exchange for a sum of money which was never returned. Other stories were told of how people had been affected not just financially but emotionally and psychologically, struggling to trust other people because of their experiences of this. One spoke about the loss of confidence after losing so much money, which affected his relationships as well as his reputation within his community to the point that he moved abroad for a fresh start. Eventually, Richard Rufus was found guilty, and yes, the trial was quite short. The judge did highlight some cause for mitigation in Richard Rufus's sentencing, such as his Christian faith, his clean record up to this point, the fact the trading did start out as legitimate and his extensive charity work, which included working with Charlton over the years. He did in fact work with the Charlton Athletic Football Club Academy, but resigned when all of this started. But when the judge weighed it up against his dishonesty and betrayal, and the detrimental effects on his victims, he decided, Swagwell Famalam, I'm taking you down. Because he was found guilty of fraud, money laundering, and carrying out a regulated activity without authorization. The bro in place prevented him from doing this, yet he carried on anyway. On the 12th of January 2023, on his 48th birthday, inmate 154 Richard Rufus was sentenced to seven and a half years in prison, half of which will be spent in prison, the other half out on license. Roger Macanjuola of the CPS said that Rufus acted in a selfish manner without any concern for his victims. He took advantage of his status as a professional athlete, a respected church member, and used the goodwill of his family and friends to scam them and associates out of millions of pounds by falsely claiming he was able to offer a low-risk investment in the foreign exchange market. He claimed that he had been successful with his investment strategies previously, but the investments were fraught with risk and he lost his victims much-needed money to the amount of £15 million. While making these huge losses, he put approximately £2 million into his personal accounts, allegedly for the purpose of investment, but this was never transferred over to his trading account. We now commence confiscation proceedings to seek to recover his ill-gotten gains. If the confiscation order is to seek 15 million, good luck. He doesn't have it. He's screwed. We've had a lot of fraudsters of late. I'm not sure I'm okay with it. But it's nowhere near as dark as what we started with last year, am I right, folks? Enjoy your time here, Richard Rufus. Charlton Athletics suck. So you being declared their best defender means nothing.